to 450 degrees. It took about 15 minutes to get it from room temperature, but how do I know it's 450 degrees? Because it's on the knob Because the knob, because the knob tells me, yeah. It's that simple. Our griddle, it's, it's a lot simpler than, than you think. Our griddle is thermostatically controlled, which means I can go from 100 all the way to 450, and it's dialed into the exact temperature. There's no more of the low, medium, low, high, because at the end of the day, I have no idea what high means, right? This thick cold rolled steel is preheated to 450 degrees. Because 450 is such a high temperature, what type of oil am I using? Canola. Peanut. Who said peanut? Was that you over here? Someone said, yeah, peanut. Peanut. I heard canola oil somewhere in the back. Peanut oil, canola oil, grapeseed oil. Those are high heat neutral oils that don't burn at high temperatures. If I use something like extra virgin olive oil at 450, it's gonna burn. It's gonna become bitter. That doesn't sound like I'm justifying my ingredients, does it? Can you use sesame or coconut oil? Can I use sesame or coconut oil? Very, very good question. Absolutely, right? Sesame oil, coconut oil have high smoke points, but they taste like coconut. They taste like sesame. For my salmon, I want it to taste like salmon. Maybe if I was doing an Asian inspired salad, then I would do sesame oil. Absolutely, that's very good, very, very good. Right, 450 degrees, canola oil, and I know we're going through a lot of information quickly, so if there are any questions, who's got questions? What do you got? All right, very, very good. So now my oil is preheating, I'm gonna use a fish spatula just to get an even thin coating over here. We can already see the smoke coming off, right? This oil is not burning, it's an even blanket of heat. So while that's preheating, I need to season my salmon. I like to keep things simple. A little bit of kosher salt, that is it. So I'm gonna season from really, really high up here. Right, why? Why is my hand all the way up here? I'm almost two feet away from it. Why do I do that? Yep. <laughs> that, that's the real answer because I'm showing off and it looks really, really cool. Right? <laughs> the, gentleman, the gentleman in front is absolutely correct. It's to get that even distribution, right? I don't want little pockets of salt on, on my seat for an even distribution. So, Jay, yeah, you can probably help me out with these, but. How much saute pans would I need if I wanted to sear off all the salmon at once? Mm -hmm. At least two, I like to say too many, right? At the end of the day, just like everyone here, we hate cleaning, right? We hate it. The biggest demonstration that I did about a year and a half ago, there's 36 people in this room. So I had to do 40 pieces of salmon because human error, right? I make mistakes all the time. I had to cook 40 pieces of salmon at the exact same time. And I don't know about everyone else, but have you ever been to a restaurant where your neighboring table, you order the same thing and their salmon or their steak looks a little bit better than, than yours? It kind of hurts you, right? Why? I paid the same $74 for that steak. It gets you angry. Now, imagine trying to cook 40 pieces of salmon live at the same time. What can go wrong? A lot. <laughs> so, the griddle, the dual griddle utilizes infrared ceramic bricks, which gives me an even blanket of heat. Other types of griddles, gas or even electric power, they use coils, right? That's going to give me hot spots. That means that salmon is going to cook a little bit quicker than that one. Is that justifying my ingredients? Am I in control? No. No, you're absolutely right. Everyone's shaking their head. I like that. Good, 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 good. There's a pop quiz at the end, so make sure we take notes, right? So, I'm not lying. So, there's something about giving someone a heating source, especially a big one like this, a spatula and a gorgeous protein, right? And the first thing, what's the first thing you want to do? Start poking it, start touching it, right? So, my chef mentor, Terry Taylor, I first chef I ever worked for, he taught me my most important lesson in cooking. Do nothing. Let it sear. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Do 
do nothing. Let the salmon sear. That cold, thick, cold roll seal has a lot of heat. That infrared brick is holding heat, so my recovery time on my salmon is the same. Right, even on my back one over here, it's also preheated to 450. Right, Jay's gonna go ahead and sear off some, some tofu for us, right? The, brick, the griddle gets that breakfast reputation. To put it in perspective, I have cooked pancakes on this griddle once, and I have worked for Sub-Zero Wolf & Co. for over a year and a half. I made pancakes once two weeks ago, and let me tell you, they were good. They were great. But I can cook anything and everything on the griddle. Let's pretend that things that I truly need an oven cavity for, so cookies, maybe some bread, I, I can't. There's no way I can do that on here. What's something that I that is really, really tough that I actually cannot cook on the griddle? Thanksgiving turkey. Thanksgiving turkey. I it's a whole roast. That's a good one. That's good. So Jay and my right ear screaming two points. Two points. I, you know what? We're gonna do the point system today, Jay. Yeah? I think everyone needs a little encouragement. Yeah. So throughout the evening, these questions that I ask, when you participate and you throw out an answer, it doesn't have to be right or wrong, you get two points. Gentleman up front already earned two points. Jay, let's confirm. Right? Yeah, He's got four already. Yeah. So just so we're all in an even playing field, Jay, let's just say uh, folks up here earn two points. How does it look? Boom. Boom. That easy. Simple. Two points. Right? The, the group with the most amount of points at, at the end of the evening, Jason has already been keeping track of the points for us, may or may not have an extra gift at the end. So, yeah, may or may not, yeah. So we'll see, right? We're gonna do a little, little gambling game. So participation is highly encouraged. So, our tofu searing, our salmon, I'm just about to flip it. Would you care to grab our salads, Jay? Yeah, Jay's gonna grab our salads for us. So, while Jay is grabbing those, I gotta, I gotta confess to you guys. Jay and I plated these salads five hours ago. Dude, it doesn't sound very good, right? Imagine trying to plate 20 salads at the exact same time. We'd be here until 12 o'clock midnight, but I know everyone is hungry, right? So, the reason Jay and I are able to plate all of these gorgeous salads, thinly shaped micro radishes, thinly shaped Persian cucumbers, Micro arugula, right? The reason they are not wilting or getting soggy is of dual refrigeration. Sub-Zero utilizes dual refrigeration, air purification system to make sure my greens stay green, right? We're gonna go a little bit more in depth about that later, but it's really time to flip our salmon. So let me grab a new glove. Are there any questions so far on the griddle? Yes. How do I know it's time to flip the salmon? Very, very good question. I'm glad you asked that. So, a couple of signs that I look for. I don't have a timer set, right? But I can see my heat transferring beautifully through the salmon. That's one visual cue. Another one is on top, you can see liquid pulling up on top of the salmon, which means that heat is transferring through. So that's kind of, there's a couple of visual cues. And uh, the third thing that I use, it's just kind of cooking in the kitchen for, for 12, 13 years. You'll, you'll pick it up eventually. So, but salmon, I think it's time to flip. Which one should we uh, flip first? One. This one or that one? That one. That one. Yes, chef. I'm going to pick this one random. How about that? Look at that gorgeous sear, right? How about that one? Right? Notice it's nonstick. Every single one of these gorgeous salmon fillets are the same. Consistency, control, 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 right? Nice and caramelized. It's not stick because we preheated our griddle, we used our appropriate oil to sear it, and we did nothing to it. A little bit of salt, a little bit of heat, right? Now, that liquid that was on top of the salmon, it's gonna start steaming it. So now we're cooking the second side even even that much more quicker. So any other questions? Yes. Well, we'll get to you next. In a residential, you know, it's the salmon that's going to be cooked. How difficult is that to cook clean? Because I'm seeing, you know, a lot of the grease and the stuff that goes along the edges. And 
I'm a terrible cook, so we probably wouldn't be doing this. For yeah. Sure. But my daughter and my son, mm -hmm. they cook on that stuff too, and I, I worry that it, and it's in a constant state of not looking good or, or keeping it clean. The question we had over here, and I love it because we are we actually include cleanup at the end of the demonstration. How do we keep this clean? Believe it or not, we clean this griddle once a week and it takes us five minutes to get it back to that stainless steel finish. Treat it just like a large cast iron pan. You can build up the seasoning as much as you want. Just back here, this is a little bit more petite than seasoning. Or I can bring it back to that stainless steel. All you need is a couple of simple tools that Jay conveniently placed over here for me, right? The Wolf Griddle Cleaning Kit. All it is is a couple of fucking pads, a carbon steel screen, and this handle. You don't need any chemicals, any crazy tools, all you need is a little elbow grease, and a little bit of know-how and oil to bring it back. Jay actually has a demonstration at the end, and he's going to bring this back to that stainless steel finish in five minutes. So, you're very welcome. We have one question over here. The fact that you said it's what makes the griddle non-stick? So, just like a cast iron pan, you always need to use a little bit of fat to cook with it, right? Whether it's canola oil, clarified butter, right? You need a little bit of that seasoning. If I was to put my salmon, just on, a, on the grill without any extra oil, it will stick. So you always need a little bit of fat, but the most important thing why salmon or protein stick is because it's not preheated. So, very, very good question. Are there any other questions? Well, before we move on, Jay is going to, we're starting to plate up our salad. So, while the salmon is done and resting over here, we're gonna go over the cleaning procedure. I did tell you that we have to clean this only once a week, but there are a couple certain steps you have to take every time you're done. So once I get all the salmon off, we have to, first thing we have to do, that was for me for later, okay? Go ahead. Look at that, teamwork makes the dream work. I really don't like this, I don't know why. But so the griddle, the first thing we have to do after we're done cooking, Simply turn off our knobs. Go back down to the off position. You're gonna use a flat top spatula. I even like to use a paint scraper. You're going to take off any excess oil or anything that did, any fawn that did build up, right? But you can see it's still relatively clean, right? Nothing really stuck. I'm gonna take anything and dispose of it down into this tray. Now, the great thing about this tray is, oh, I lost my towel. This tray is removable. So this tray comes up, dispose of my oil after every single use. This is hot. The tray is not dishwasher safe. So when you're done disposing oil, wash it with a Dawn or Joy degreasing soap. A little bit of quick hand wash, five minutes, dry it off, you can replace it. But down here, I also have a designated griddle towel container. Just like my cast iron pan, I'm done cooking, there's a little bit of oil left. Take that towel while it's warm and simply wipe off any excess. So now that thin coating of oil that's left on there, next time I turn it on, it keeps building up that seasoning and that nonstick patina. So throughout the week, your griddle's gonna look like this, right? But someone like me, who I don't like that look, I, I'm a little bit of a neat freak, this is what I do. I'm going to take my cover, and now the mess is gone, right? That simple. I'm going to leave this cover. The exhaust is the only thing that is exposed on a range top. I'm going to use Barkeeper's Friend. This bottle over here is liquid gold. It's going to clean this up in 30 seconds. And they owe me the biggest sponsorship ever because I sell a lot. So at the end, we're going to demonstrate how to bring this back to that stainless steel finish. Oh, thank you very much. So, but do not put the cover while it's hot. Let this cool down to room temperature, and then you move on. So, 
Any other questions on the griddle before we move on? What temperature do we make pancakes at? What temperature do we make pancakes at? So you're gonna really, really hate this answer, but what type of pancakes are we making? Are they buttermilk? What type of flour are we using? Do we want a nice, delicate, soft pancake or do we want a crispy one? Crispy. crispy. So let's do probably 350, 375, right? It's all about using your intuition. So going from your medium to high, right, on your traditional burner to the actual numbers is going to take a little bit of intuition and just research and just using the appliances. So very, very good question. But we need to move on to our induction cooking.